Hello friends and welcome to the broadcast. I'm so glad that you're here today. We're going to be talking about the supernatural fruit of the Spirit today and specifically the supernatural fruit of joy. If the devil can't steal your joy, he can't take your goods. Amen. So open your heart and receive the Word of God today and tell your friends about the broadcast. Blessings. It's great to have you, and I'm glad to have Aaron here today, and we're teaching on a teaching that he recently uh, shared in church, and it, we're teaching about the supernatural fruit of the Holy Spirit, and today we're going to be talking about the second fruit, which is joy. Now, we talked about love yesterday, and we said that you said that love is the first fruit, mm -hmm. and all of the other fruit flow forth from the first fruit, which is love. The Bible says that God is love mm -hmm. and the nature of God in us. But we, we also said, you said this, that we have all of the fruit of the spirit in us in Christ. Mm -hmm. So when you're born again as a believer, you have the exact same spirit of Jesus. So you don't have a shortage in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that you understand this because there's two mentalities. See, some people think I have to get all these things, but if you actually realize that you already have all these things in Christ, mm -hmm. it becomes easier for you to flow in them. Mm -hmm. And this is your nature. It's your nature to, to walk in love. Right. It's now your nature to be a joyful person, not a right. depressed person. It's your nature to have peace and Amen. not just be afraid and full of anxiety all the time. It's your nature to to you know have long suffering towards us. this is this is your your nature. Right. So it actually goes against your nature when you're you know manifesting other things. So um, I'm going to read Galatians 5, 22 to 23. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. So we talked about love. We're going to talk about joy today. And these first three fruit, love, joy, and peace really correlate to our relationship with God. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I love um, preaching about joy. Joy is, is powerful. Right. You know, the joy of the Lord is your strength. God, God has placed his joy within you. He wants to pour joy out on you. And um, Jesus wants to give you supernatural joy. You know, I like calling these the supernatural Amen. fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus wants to give you supernatural joy, a joy that the world can't give you. Right. You know, people try to find pleasure in the world. I wouldn't even call it joy. No, the Bible actually calls it mirth. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, I think it's the book of Ecclesiastics. The Bible mm -hmm. says even in mirth. His heart is heavy, talking mm -hmm. about the world. Mm -hmm. And so in the world, they can have a you know big, wild party, and they might be having a lot of fun on the outside, but it calls it mirth. But their heart, their spirit is heavy. Their mm -hmm. inside, their soul is not right. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But we have the joy of the Lord in our spirit. Mm -hmm. And when we have the joy of the Lord in our spirit, we can actually be going through major difficulties and major problems and yet still operate in joy. Mm -hmm. You mentioned this yesterday, but in Philippians 4 verse 4, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And he's actually writing that from jail. Mm -hmm. where he's been in prison for preaching the gospel. And most people would not be thinking that's a very joyful place. Mm -hmm. But he said we can rejoice in the uh, Lord always and we can continually rejoice because we're not, it's not about our outside circumstances or situations. Mm -hmm. It's about we have the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I know there's a problem that I've been dealing with actually for several years and it kind of wears on you. And, and it was, it's a, you know, challenge that we have with a certain situation with the insurance company, so on and so forth. And the devil would try to get me down. But I think about the people in the Ukraine, mm -hmm. you know, that their, their buildings are being bombed and they have no recourse mm -hmm. by Russia mm -hmm. and these different things. So praise God, we got a reason to rejoice. We can rejoice in the Lord. We're not being in prison for preaching the gospel. And even if we were, we could still rejoice. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to um, talk about Jesus and um, just the fact that he really wants to 
to have joy flowing in your life. Right. You know, um, Jesus quoted Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. This is the first time he um, preached right. um, in, his, in his ministry. He opened the book of Isaiah and read from here Isaiah 61. So I'm going to read the first few verses here. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy. I want to talk about that here in a minute. The oil of joy, just remember that the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. Man, the trees of righteousness. You know, we, we've been given the righteousness of God. We've been given a new nature. His righteousness is inside right. of us. The righteousness of Jesus Christ. And he's given us the oil of joy. You know, oil... Oil is an important um, thing throughout Scripture. Um, it, it's to anoint, right. you know, to, to set someone apart, to, to make them holy. You would anoint the priests, would anoint the people, would anoint right. the altar. Um, the, the Holy Spirit is called the, the anoint, you know, anointed. Jesus was the anointed one. Right. And, um, you know, I was thinking about oil and, and fruit, how it relates to the, the fruit of the Spirit. And I was just thinking about just in the natural realm about oil and um you know, what the, the best oils are, you know, the best oils come from fruit that are grown from trees, right? You know, the best oils, the healthiest, the ones that, that actually, you know, produce health in your body can help you live longer. They, they are, you know, oils that are, that come from fruit grown from trees. And I'm thinking about two in particular, the, the avocado, Right. And um, olives. Olives mm -hmm. are fruit that are grown from trees. There are olive trees all around Israel. There are Mediterranean things. Actually, avocado trees are, are grown in the Mediterranean climate as well. I spent three summers in Santa Barbara, and there's avocado orchards all around there. And it's very, it's very similar to the Mediterranean climate. But, uh, right. Um, you know, avocados are, are very expensive. You know, it's usually more than a dollar for an avocado and olive oil can be very expensive. But these types of oils, there's something about them, you know, because they're, they're grown from big, healthy trees. There's a big root system. Something about, you know, getting they're the actually, nutrients out of the ground and coming up through the roots and through their big trunks and into their leaves and then producing this fruit. Avocado and olive they, they produce um, a very healthy kind of oil. Right. I mean, uh, for instance, in your diet, you don't, some oil is not good for you. Some fat is not good for you. But like mm -hmm. the oil that comes from avocados, for instance, or olive oil, mm -hmm. that, that it's actually good for your body. I actually use it when I grill. Mm -hmm. I, I take and I rub olive oil on my grill to keep mm -hmm. things from sticking. And uh, it's healthy for you. Yeah, and there's, other, there's other oils that aren't, as good you know i was thinking about a crisco right you know crisco um <laughs> you know people cook with crisco some people cook with butter um but like we we need the oil of joy we need the oil of the holy spirit that anointing oil thank you in the church today we don't need like i, I kind of talked about this when i was preaching on this but there's too many churches that that have like a fake kind of oil they have a you know, I can't believe it's not butter going on. Like it, it, it looks like butter, it, but it, it's, it's not real butter. It's not the real thing. You know, there, there's a lot of, they, they try to imitate the power of God, but it's not really there. The anointing isn't really there. There's a lot of churches that really don't understand the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, a few years back, we had Mark Hankins here preaching, and I got under the influence of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and I was laughing. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my friends came up and held me up while I was laughing, and they took that video and put it on the Internet or something. Somebody said, that's demonic. Well, you don't know what demonic is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm telling you, joy is not demonic. Mm -hmm. Joy is from the Lord, and, mm -hmm. and he gives you the oil of joy for, the mo for mourning, mm -hmm. the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Mm -hmm. Right, that he might be glorified in our lives. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah, and really the, the Holy Spirit is always accompanied by joy. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is always accompanied by joy. And I'll have, I'll have this to say, um, people who are offended 
by the Holy Spirit are often offended by joy. They are. They don't understand the supernatural. You know, the, the devil is an imitator. The mm -hmm. devil is a liar. And, and so, uh, the, but the joy of the Lord, you know, the Bible actually says this, and I, this might be in your uh, notes, Aaron, but in Acts 13, verse mm -hmm. 52, mm -hmm. the disciples were filled with the mm -hmm. Holy Ghost and with joy. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they had just got run out of town for preaching the gospel, and yet they were filled filled with the Holy Ghost and filled with joy. Well, and the people who ran them out of town, I want to I want to bring this point. It says um, the word, this is Acts 13, 49 through 52. It says the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region, but the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their religion. But they <laughs> shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. It's actually um, religious people right. that were offended by what was happening. A religious that. spirit is often offended by joy because <laughs> a religious spirit doesn't come from the Holy Spirit. It comes from the devil. Yeah, I've had that happen. Aaron, I had that happen when I was in Bible school. You know, I was going to Dr. Lester Summerall's church and I had so much joy. I'd have people tell me, you shouldn't be happy like that. You shouldn't be laughing out in services like mm -hmm. that. But, you know, it's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I've had that happen when I first started preaching. People would be, I'm, I'm calmer now than I was when I first started preaching, which I get pretty fired up some days now. But you know, it's they did not understand the things of the Spirit and the joy of the Lord. And God works in different people with different ways. Mm -hmm. But praise God for the joy of the Lord. And, you know, like it said, the joy of the Lord, you quoted this early in Nehemiah 8.10, is our strength. Mm -hmm. And actually, Paul and his team went to the next town. And in that town, they, they chased them out of town again. The next town, they had great healings, great miracles, and they ran them out of town and then stoned Paul and left him for dead. But the disciples joined around him. It was at Lystra and raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He, he went, turned right around and went right back where he was preaching and kept preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. And he just would not quit. I believe Paul was one of the most diligent, disciplined people in the world. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And he just would not let the devil will stop him but a lot of that was because they're filled with the holy ghost and joy mm -hmm. and if the devil can't steal your joy he can't take your goods mm -hmm. so don't let the devil steal your joy amen keep operating in the joy of the lord let the joy of the lord fill you let the joy of the lord empower you let the joy of the lord help you so that you can move into the things of god Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to take a short break right now. We'll be back after this short break. Stay tuned. And Aaron will be teaching more on the joy of Jesus and the joy, of the fruit of the Spirit, which is joy. Blessings. Friends, I certainly hope that you've been enjoying watching this broadcast. My son Aaron taught this series on the supernatural fruit of the Holy Spirit here in Church Live, and it is fantastic teaching. In fact, I had one of my staff say, that's one of the best teaching that he's ever done. So you can get these live teachings from the church by accessing our website free at karischristiancenter.com. Jesus said three beautiful words in John 19, verse 30. He said, it is finished. There is nothing more that needs to be paid in the realm of redemption. The price has already been paid. Friends, I'm so glad you stayed with us. We've been talking about the joy of the Lord and the supernatural fruit of joy. And if you're born again, you have the fruit of joy on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, you know, he was a joyful person. Amen. You know, his life was marked by joy. I love what the psalmist says in um, Psalm 45, verse 7. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, a lot of times people have this picture of Jesus and he's somber and, 
He's not, and, and then I've seen pictures of Jesus where he's just laughing. You know, the Bible says, he that sits in the heavens will laugh. He will have mm -hmm. them in derision. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a good picture to keep in your mind, mm -hmm. especially when you're dealing with difficulties and problems. Mm -hmm. I remember one time years ago when we first started out pastoring, we went to a town meeting. We didn't like something that was being locally in our little town of Kit Carson. And the city council ruled against us. And, and anyway, when we went out of the meeting, one of the ladies that was in our group, and there were, you know, five or six families, you know, men and women from our church, uh, you know, five or six couples that were at that meeting. And, and the city council there in Kit Carson had ruled against us. And she said, I just got this scripture. He that sits in the heavens will laugh. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing that they ruled against us on, actually, it came back and uh, the person who wanted to do this certain thing that we didn't like at that point in time was not able to do it. And some people said it's because a person in our church had a lot of influence at the bank and he went back down to the bank and told them he's going to take out all his money. We never had any money. He kept money borrowed and working for him. Uh, it, it, that was an absolute lie. But it was really because this person who wanted this certain permit from the state, they had to have a lease uh, for a year in order to have that kind of permit, the one that we were protesting for them to have. And the state denied it. So it wasn't anything to do with us, but we were down there and I, God got the last laugh. And I still believe that God gets the last laugh. And sometimes you may be facing a major difficulty or a major problem, but you need to keep your eyes on Jesus because he that sits in the heaven will laugh and God's going to have the last laugh. Mm -hmm. And I need to remember that myself. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> well, um, you know, I love, you know, what we talked about in Acts 13, um, verse 52, that the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, um, joy and the Holy Spirit go go together like peas and carrots. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe right now you're feeling depressed. And a great remedy for depression is to pray in tongues. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, um, if you've never prayed in tongues before, if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, you can actually call us here at the ministry. Um, we, we have prayer, trained prayer ministers, just people who really flow um, with the, the things of the Spirit. And they'll pray with you. And, and this is actually something that Jesus wants to give um, his disciples. And, and, and God is not done pouring out the Holy Spirit. The Holy, there is not a shortage of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost and he's never been taken, praise mm -hmm. God, back from the earth. We're still in the same dispensation, the dispensation of grace and the Holy Spirit is being poured out on the earth. And the only qualification that you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues is to be born again. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you must be born again. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And if you have believed on Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you're a candidate for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you actually need the Holy Spirit to help you. The Holy Spirit is called your helper. He's called your uh, comforter. He's called, which means the one called alongside to help you. And you need to receive that as a mm -hmm. believer. You need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It, mm -hmm. will, it will make you, praise God, it'll help you in life. Mm -hmm. And um, when I say if you're dealing with depression, um, I said, just pray in tongues until you don't feel depressed. So that Amen. might be 10 minutes. That might be 20 minutes. That, that might be two hours. You might be praying in tongues for several <laughs> days. You might be like Forrest Gump. Just, I'm just going to start running and uh, I'm not going to stop till I get to the ocean. And when I get there, I'm going to turn back and go the other way. So some of you might start praying in tongues and Hey, Amen. I'm, I'm going to keep, keep doing this and I'm going to keep flowing in this thing. Amen. And, uh, you know, Amen. Uh, when I preached this on a Wednesday night, actually several people on, on Wednesday night here at our church came up for prayer and um, who had been dealing with major depression, major anxiety. And I, I got to pray for, for two men um, who got set free that night. And they, yeah. they were both praying in tongues. And um, this they one guy said, I, 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 I've, I've received it, but he just said, I can't really flow in it. He said, I just have a hard time praying in tongues. And I explained to him like, you don't lose it. It's like riding a bike when you receive it. Like you, you just get Amen. back on the bike and you do it again. So I, I, I made him jump off the, the diving board and start praying in tongues. And he did. And it just started flowing and, and just joy came on him. Hallelujah. You know, there, there's something about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and joy. 
You know, Aaron, there's this question. Do I have to tarry to receive the Holy Spirit? And I don't believe since the day of Pentecost, since the Holy Spirit was poured out, that anyone needs to tarry. In mm -hmm. Acts 10, Acts 19, uh, uh, when they received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues, the day of Pentecost was in Acts chapter 2. Uh, Acts chapter 2, they tarried, but Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 19, they didn't tarry. Mm -hmm. They received the Holy Spirit. And I don't believe anybody needs to tarry today to receive the Holy Spirit. He has mm -hmm. not been withheld uh, or taken back. I believe what you need to do is once you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you need to tarry in the presence of Spirit and keep speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Aaron, I personally was baptized in the Holy Spirit 45 years ago when I was just 14 years old in Andrew Womack's Bible study in Lamar, Colorado in 1978 when almost nobody knew Andrew Womack. And you know, my life was completely changed for the good. And I have spoken in tongues, if not every day since then. Nearly every day since then, I have spoken in tongues. And I'll tell you, I've I've probably spoken in tongues every day since 1978 when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And what you need to do if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you need to keep praying in tongues on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. It'll change your life. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says you build up your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost in Jude verse 20. And we need to keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah, and um, joy is something that you get to choose. It's something that's on the inside of you. You know, this is part of your spirit in Jesus. Jesus was a joyful person. He was anointed with that oil of joy more so than anyone around him. Hallelujah. And because he was anointed with it, he can anoint you with it too. Right. So, um, you know, I, I remember um, several years ago um, a, a, a big well-known minister that I followed on social media did a survey and just asked his following, you know, how, <laughs> how many of you are depressed? And he has, you know, hundreds of thousands of, you know, maybe millions of followers and uh, like 80% of people who follow him, you know, and uh, uh, said they were depressed and, and uh, he, but he, he hardly ever preaches about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And uh, doesn't, you know. <laughs> Aaron, Andrew Womack <laughs> came to our church in Kit Carson, Colorado. This is over 25 years ago. And when Andrew came to our church, he preached this message on joy. Mm -hmm. And there were probably 90 people there the day that Andrew, and I'm talking kids and all, Kit Carson's a real little town, 300 people. And Andrew wasn't as known as well as then. He was, his ministry was growing. He was known fairly well by then. But, um, you know, when he gave the altar call, only one person came forward to receive joy. And he told me how unique that was. He said, Lawson, usually when I go to a church and preach that exact same message, he said, 50% of the congregation will come up to receive joy. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's something I live. And that, that's something I live. And mm -hmm. I live in the joy of the Lord. I, I have learned and I'm still working on it. I'm not perfect. I'm still w working on walking in joy. Sometimes I let the devil or <laughs> certain six situations or some things because I focus on them too much get me down. But you know what? I have learned to live in joy and we need to learn to live in joy. Mm -hmm. And so one person out of 90, so, you know, around 1% of people in my church Mm -hmm. struggle with depression. It's probably, there may be a few more today where we're at in Colorado Springs and we have a couple of thousand people that church call this church home and about a thousand people in, you know, with, with all three services a week show up every week in physical services that there, there may be a few more people struggle with depression than mm -hmm. that, but not a lot. And I've seen people set free too, just supernaturally people who've dealt with major depression, major anxiety. And, and, um, you know, sometimes it, it it's an instant thing. Sometimes it's just over the course of, of learning how to flow in the oil of joy. You know, I, I've seen I've seen people just God God just do miracles in their life and through Amen. them. Um, and they they didn't. It wasn't a struggle. It was just it was just just like a tree growing and producing fruit. It was just Amen. it they they're just planted in the right place. They they're in, in a place where the Holy Spirit is given free reign to minister or there's good teaching where, where we're taught that we're victorious in Jesus Christ and, and just being planted, rooted, grounded in love in a, in a good, you know, 
spirit filled spirit filled grace and faith church you know Amen. and i just seen oh, over the course of a few years just amazing fruit come out of their life and and people who really dealt with ma- like panic attacks and you know Amen. major anxiety and, and just they 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 didn't have to take medication they didn't have to you know, and I'm not saying those things are wrong. Some people do yeah. need help or, or do need to if see. If you need that, you know what? There's no condemnation. If you need help, get help. Praise God. We don't condemn you. I'm not going to condemn anybody. But you don't have to stay that way. Mm-hmm. You know, your your grandma, on your, your mom's mom, mm-hmm. struggled emotionally and mentally. And she was on um, drugs for that for years until she got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Mm. And she threw all that stuff in the toilet and God healed her. Now, I'm not telling people to do that, but God healed her. Mm-hmm. And I never saw her in that state when I met your mom. You know, your mom was 19 years old when we met. She was 20 years old when, when we got married. And I never saw her mother in a state of depression because she got completely healed mm-hmm. by the joy of the Lord. We had a couple that helped us start this church. And when, you know, they helped us, this woman was dealing with fear, dealing with panic attacks and on some medication, but she got completely delivered from that. So there's no condemnation if you're in that state, but you don't have to stay that way. Mm -hmm. You can believe the word. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be filled with joy and you can let Jesus you know, rule your life, praise mm-hmm. God, and you can let the fruit of the Spirit that are in you in Christ flow out of your life. Mm-hmm. You know, tomorrow we're going to be talking about peace. Mm-hmm. You know, the Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, uh, you know, you will keep him in perfect peace because his mind is fixed. His mind is stayed upon you. And if you fix your mind on Jesus, you can walk in love. You can flow in joy. You can flow in peace. Amen. And if you need prayer today, if you need to receive the Holy Ghost, if you want to become a partner, if you want product, you can give us a call today. I have trained prayer ministers that will minister to you. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. We have access to the supernatural fruit of the Spirit as believers. When we choose to walk in the Spirit, we will receive the inheritance that God has made available to us. We'd like to bless you with a digital copy of the teaching, The Supernatural Fruit of the Holy Spirit, a $20 value, free of charge. Download it today at charischristiancenter.com. Friends, I'm Pastor Lawson Purdue, and I love church, and I'm excited about church. You know, Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I want to invite you to come to church, whether you're in Colorado Springs or wherever you are in the world. You can connect with us online, Sundays at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m., or you can just get on our website and watch us at charischristiancenter.com. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at PO Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.